Hi, this is Bob O'Dell from RootSource. I am standing at the Loy Korea, which is the university in Wittenberg, Germany, where Martin Luther taught. Today, we're going to be hearing from a Messianic Jew in the United Kingdom named Richard Harvey, and he is working on a very interesting and important project. Let's hear what he has to say. Hi, Richard. How are you doing? Very good, thank you. Tell me uh, about the Judensau. What is that? Yeah, the Judensau is the German word for Jew pig, and it's a statue. In fact, there are many statues around Europe, but we're here in Wittenberg in Germany, the home of Martin Luther, and on the wall of the church where he was the pastor, there is a statue of a pig, and standing around it is a Jewish man, a rabbi, who has his hand up the back side of the pig, up the pig's anus. And underneath the pig, there are Jewish children sucking on the pig's nipples, drinking the milk of the pig. Now, this is a horrific, obscene, anti-Semitic statue. And is this the only place that that exists? No, there were many places, mainly in Germany, but also a few in Scandinavia and France, maybe over 60 or 70, where these statues exist. Some of them are on the walls of churches on the outside, some are on the inside, some of them are carved on the seats or the panels in the church. In fact, from about the 12th century to the 16th or 17th century, these were very popular cartoons, if you like, which were teaching the people that the Jews were like animals. They were half human, half animals. They, the, some of these statues have Jews uh, in sexual positions with these pigs. And it's a terrible way that the church made fun of the Jews and blamed them for not believing in Jesus and said that the lies that the Jews taught and Martin Luther's most anti-Semitic book was called On the Jews and Their Lies, that these lies were like pig's excrement or living in the filth of a pigsty. So these statues were on not just uh, Lutheran churches, but on Catholic churches. They all started off on Catholic churches. The Lutherans took over many of the Catholic churches when the Protestant Reformation came along, and they kept them. And in Luther's case, here in Wittenberg, he even made it worse. Because after Luther's time, shortly afterwards, another of the book he, books he wrote, which is called Hashem von Hashem Mephras, on the holy name of God, you could translate it. That text, where he makes fun of the name of God, is written over the statue in the church here in Lichtenberg. Why is it, in, why is it timely that we are talking about this right now? Well, we're coming up to the 500th anniversary of the beginning of the Reformation, when Luther put up his 95 theses protesting against the authority of the Catholic Church, the sale of indulgences, and uh, really saying, we have to repent. His first statement is, we must repent. But what has happened is that we are meeting as Protestants, Catholics, I'm a Messianic Jew, a Jew who believes in Jesus. We're praying for unity and reconciliation and for the work of the Holy Spirit to bring us back together in a harmony. And as a Messianic Jew, I have a particular concern because my family are from Germany. My family name was Hirschland and it got changed to Harvey when we came to England. But my German Jewish family suffered under the hands of the Nazis and the Nazis used Luther's anti-Semitic propaganda. They reprinted his sermons, this picture of Die Judensau, the Jewish pig, they turned into an abuse of Jews living in their day. They called them Sal Yuda, pig Jew. And I'm not only outraged at this, and I think it's a terrible act of discrimination for anybody to pick on them like this, but my own family suffered because of this. How did you become outraged? Uh, I learned about this whole issue. Yeah, well, most Jewish people are brought up to know 
of the history of persecution. My family, I'm of German Jewish background, we know that we lost many of our relatives in the Holocaust. For many years, I never wanted to come to Germany. It was just too painful. As I began to study the roots of Christian anti-Judaism, I realized that from the days of the early church, the church has been saying, God has finished with Israel. God has finished with the Jewish people. We, the church, particularly the Catholic Church or the Protestant Church, we're the new Israel. Now this is uh, what people would call replacement theology. Supersessionism is the theological term. Not only is there a theological anti-Judaism, but this was linked to popular superstition, prejudice and persecution of the Jews. The Jews were not safe in Christian Europe. Luther, in his book on the Jews and their lies, says that they, their synagogues should be destroyed, their books should be burnt, they should be thrown out of Germany, they should not be given any safe passage, no one should listen to them. So as I've had to study these things, particularly because I've been invited to participate with Catholics and Protestants, my brothers and sisters in the faith, and we realize that we have to try and seek reconciliation despite the differences between us, I've really been brought to a very painful sense of grief and mourning over the things that my people suffered at the hands of so-called Christians. And as I've researched the, this um, Judensau statue and pictures, I've seen that it proliferated all over Germany and other parts of Europe. There are many still standing in churches and cathedrals and public buildings today. A few have been removed, but not many. And I'm saying something needs to be done. If you published a cartoon like this today, it would be by, like publishing anything that was uh, discriminatory and inf inflammatory against another people. I think there's something that's been done wrong here. I think Christians should take responsibility and do something about it. Now, some Christians at Wittenberg uh, 2017 have come together to ask for something to be done with respect to this particular uh, thing here in Wittenberg. What is that? Well, they've put together a petition, a letter, which has been delivered to the church authorities, to the local pastor here, and I think it will go to the Lutheran church, the state authorities, and I pray that that will be well received. And, and what is being requested from that letter? We want, the, we want this statue to be removed. Uh, I'm hoping something better will be put in its place. Uh, I think uh, it's not yet clear exactly what action the church authorities will take, but we pray that they will. We would love to be able to announce next year at the 500th anniversary, the 2017 celebration, that in agreement with the church authorities as a sign of reconciliation, as a sign of repentance over the past, and as a sign of good relations with the Jewish community here in Germany and around the world, this statue has been removed. And you personally want to uh, uh, write something about this. Tell, it, tell us what your project yeah, is. Yeah, I'm writing a, a couple of books at the moment. One is called Luther and the Jews, Putting Right the Lies. I'm trying to get the sense of what is the good news that Lutherans have for my people, the Jewish people, Israel. For most Jewish people, if you mention Luther, the first thing they think of is anti-Semitism. The thing they, if you mention Wittenberg, they think, yes, that's where Luther is, there's statues there as well. I want my people to hear good news from Lutherans. And there must be good news because there are many good things about the life and teaching of Martin Luther. He, he took a bold stand against the hypocrisy and the uh, dry institutions of the church. He said it's only by faith that we are saved, justification by faith alone. He puts the focus back on the supremacy of the Messiah, sola Christe, the supremacy of scripture, sola scriptura, and the, the need for faith, sola fide. So there's many good things to give thanks for about Martin Luther, but this is the one blind spot, the dark side, where I really think it's time for Christians to do something about it. Yeah, look out for Luther and the Jews putting right the lies. 
and Luther and the Messianic Jews, strange theological bedfellows. From Richard Harvey. From Richard Thank Harvey. Thank you for being with us today. Great to be with you. Thank you.